Upland is a metaverse that is mapped to the real world, and you can buy virtual plots of land that are tied to real world addresses. There's a vibrant economy around the real estate and property trading aspect of Upland, and with the introduction of cars, we can expect to see a brand new type of economy in this game. In this video, I'm going to give some insights as to what we can expect to see with the car economy. It's very much so in its infancy right now, but there are lots of things that you can already start strategizing around in order to better prepare yourself for when these features come into the game. This video is sponsored by Viva Las Upland, the poker hand node in the metaverse located in Paradise, Las Vegas. Their mission is to connect, build, and promote the Las Vegas community in the Upland Metaverse. More on them throughout the video, and you can connect with them in the link in the upper right-hand corner or the description below. Beyond just buying and selling vehicles, we can expect that there is going to be a lot of things that you are going to need to do with these different types of vehicles. Every type of asset in the metaverse is built and introduced in a way that there is utility behind each one of the assets. These utilities might not be immediately evident once these assets are introduced into the metaverse, but this video will try and tie everything in together and explain the importance of these vehicles and how it all ties into the greater economy in the metaverse. The first and most important aspect of vehicles is obviously the manufacturing of them. This is Upland's MV Motors manufacturing plant located at 4220 Network Circle in Santa Clara. And you can see here all the different vehicles in the back lot. You can click on the factory itself and you can see what vehicles are up next in the production queue. Just like all non-living items, vehicles require spark in order to manufacture them. It won't only be MV Motors manufacturing vehicles for the metaverse, but Upland has announced that they are working on partnerships with real-world car manufacturers. And in the future, Uplanders will also be able to manufacture their own vehicles in their own factories. Having said that, Upland has mentioned that there is going to be a very high barrier of entry for players who wish to manufacture their own vehicles, as the design criteria for these cars will be heavily scrutinized. After the vehicles have been produced, you need a showroom in order to sell them. Players are able to sell both new and used cars in these showrooms. Not every manufacturer also has to run a showroom and do the sales aspect, but it can be an excellent way to keep your costs low. In addition to these vehicles here, there are also race cars, pickup trucks, semi-trailers, sedans, and SUVs. Again, all vehicles have utility, but something like a race car would function much more different than a semi-trailer. Now, one of the more fun things that you will be able to do in Upland with your vehicles is race them. You can see here a number of race tracks that both Upland and users have created. And of course, these routes are based off of streets and addresses located in the real world. Players will be able to design their own type of meta ventures and become racetrack designers. You can see here the Poker Hand Speedway Club Track, which is a racetrack that has been designed by Viva Las Upland in the Paradise neighborhood in Las Vegas. Once they have an opportunity to do so, they will be creating this racetrack within Upland and enabling people to race this track in competitions in the metaverse. This is just one of the exciting racetracks that they have planned, as well as other things that Viva Las Uplands has on their roadmap. In addition to the Upland vehicle racing, they have plans for go-kart racing, as well as horse racing and other type of mini-games that can be played in Layer 2 experiences. Make sure to check out the Upland Guide maps in the link in the upper right-hand corner to see exactly where all of these racetracks are located. Each racetrack has different parameters, and that can influence who can win the race. In addition to the track itself, your vehicle and your block explorer, which will be your driver, can have influence on the outcome of a race. Even if you have the fastest sports car, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is going to be the best car to be used on every type of racetrack. Now, as for your car drivers, we know that there are block explorer shops that you can buy and sell different block explorers. For example, here we have Lucci's Bunkers Block Explorers, which is also part of the Viva Las Upland node in Paradise, Las Vegas. Now, in a similar way that vehicles have different attributes, we can expect block explorers also to have attributes of their own, and players will be able to practice racing and train their racers in order to increase some of the performance of their attributes. There could be a scenario where there's going to be a racing competition at the Poker Hand Speedway, and you might have the perfect vehicle that is paired with that track in order to race but you might not have a well-performing block explorer that matches that track. 
you might want to head over to a nearby block explorer shop that probably has people that are actively racing and training on that track with different block explorers that they would be looking to sell. The same thing could be true if you have a block explorer but you're missing a car. You might want to find a nearby showroom that might sell new and used cars that probably match up quite well with the surrounding racetracks. Since Upland is a metaverse based on real world locations and proximity, it would make sense that all of the best block explorers and vehicles that are matched up with some of these racetracks would be in close proximity of the racetracks themselves. So players who enjoy the racing aspect of the game and have some time to do so can find value in owning block explorers, training them up, and finding a buyer on the secondary market. Now that I've covered racing, the other two types of utility for vehicles will be shipping and transportation. There will be cities in the future that will be only be accessible by vehicle, so you might need to catch a taxi or an Uber from one city to another. And it would also make sense that in the future there will also be a need to use vehicles within a city in order to travel from one place to another much faster than what happens now with players block explorers. And as for shipping, any map asset, or formerly known as pieces of outdoor decor, all of this movement of the asset from the factory to the showroom and, and from the showroom to the buyer's property is going to have to be done by means of transportation. If you've got a fleet of passenger vans or semi-trailers, you can set yourself up to provide a service to players and metaventures within the metaverse in order to provide these services which will be much needed. I go into a lot more detail about shipping, transportation, car racing, and the need for vehicles for all three of those applications in the video in the upper right hand corner. Another way that players will be able to earn using cars and vehicles is through rental services. In the future, there could be a situation where you want to fly from the East Coast to the West Coast, so let's say from Manhattan to Los Angeles, for some sort of event that's happening there. But you only own one car and it's in Manhattan. It doesn't make sense to ship it all the way over to Los Angeles for maybe just a week that you're going to be there, so you might want to go ahead and rent a car in Los Angeles. Or maybe your map asset showroom is having a sale this week and you need an additional semi-trailer in order to support the additional demand that you have during this week. You might be able to rent a vehicle from a MetaVenture that supports vehicle rentals. Heading back into the car attributes, one thing that we know is that cars will not last forever. We can see they have both durability and reliability ratings. We know that there will be odometer trackings also on the vehicles, so you will be able to see exactly how much the car has been used. This is going to be an important factor when you're looking to purchase a vehicle, whether it be first-hand or on the secondary market, you can see how much use has been put into the vehicle. Cars have the ability to be damaged, this will happen during car races, and I would speculate that also during regular travel, whether it be shipping or transporting people between different cities, it will be possible that a car would break down. It hasn't been explicitly mentioned how these different parameters will play a part in the metaverse, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into what exactly durability and reliability mean, and the difference between them. Durability refers to the ability of the car to withstand wear, decay, or damage over time. If your car is built with quality materials, then chances are if it gets into a fender bender or into a crash, the cost of the damage will not be as high in comparison to something that is not very durable. If every small car accident, your entire car essentially falls apart, then the cost to repair that car will be a lot higher. Reliability is the ability of the vehicle to consistently perform its intended function without failure. So in the metaverse, if you are transporting people from one city to another city acting as an Uber, you fully expect that the engine is not going to stop working on you and you're going to be able to get from A to B without unhappy customers. So the higher your reliability rating, the more confidence you have in your vehicle that it will be able to perform its intended function for the duration of the trip. Now we know that even the best of cars are susceptible to getting into car accidents and even having things like engine failures. So there are going to have to be meta ventures within Upland that can support the repair of these vehicles. Chances are that you will either have to have sparks staked on these vehicles in order to repair them or pay a fee in Upex in order to do so as well.
it might also make sense that if you're creating a racetrack that you might want to have a garage close by for that people who do race frequently that might get into car accidents or have their cars break down. You're going to want to have something close by that will be able to fix them up and get them back racing as soon as possible. Alternatively, if you have certain routes that you drive on a regular basis, maybe between your factory and your showroom, and you own a fleet of vehicles, it might make sense for you to supply yourself with the ability to fix up your own cars somewhere along that route. Now I spoke about damage to the cars, but maybe it will also be possible to upgrade your cars. And a body shop like this would function in the same way as repairing cars as it would for improving the performance of them. If you are a player that is involved in manufacturing and you're also looking to own a number of vehicles to support the supply chain that you have, then you're going to have to keep in mind that you need Spark also for manufacturing and also for recharging your cars. It's still unclear if players will be able to charge their vehicles on their own or if it must be done through something like a MetaVenture. If that's the case, then the location of these spark charging stations is also going to be important in their proximity to highly used travel routes and racetracks. Even if you have no aspirations to create any meta ventures, but you're still going to need a home and maybe you're going to want to own a vehicle in the Upland Metaverse. And this spark is going to be an important resource for everybody. So make sh so if you want to learn more about how you can get spark, take a look at the video in the upper right hand corner. Now to summarize, I hope that in this video I have explained a number of different ways that players will be able to make use of their vehicles and the different types of utility that Upland is creating for everything directly related to vehicles, such as the transportation aspect and buying and selling of vehicles, and other aspects, such as block explorers, charging stations, and becoming a racetrack designer. As more of these features enter the metaverse and more cars enter the metaverse, then we can start to see a more thriving economy around everything related to vehicles. The last thing I want to leave you with is that in addition to Upland constantly releasing new cities, Upland will continue to manufacture more vehicles. With only a few thousand vehicles being manufactured to date, and it's now April 2023, we can expect that Upland will continue to release vehicles. With their main goal of recreating the real world, it's going to be difficult to do that if they're not going to be releasing new properties and if they're not going to be manufacturing more vehicles to support everything that I discussed in this video. If you want to learn more insight as to why Upland will continue releasing new cities and not stop anytime soon, take a look at this next video down below.